Hey guys, my name is Yumi here, where I talk about anything and everything related to money and how to grow your wealth. First of all, I want to kind of address the situation that I haven't been making a lot of videos recently, and that's because I have been busy the last couple of months trying to find my investment property, which is why I'm making this video today, is because I want to share with you some great news. I just bought my first real estate flip of 2024 in Los Angeles, California. Yay! And why did I buy a house when interest rates are still kind of high at like 6 to 7%? Well, if you're new to my channel, I am a Singaporean who has been living in the United States since 2011. And what I have learned um, living here is that one of the best ways to grow your wealth is through real estate. And it's no secret that real estate plays a pivotal role in the success of countless of individuals such as Warren Buffett, Jeff Bezos, Donald Trump, Oprah Winfrey, Jay-Z, and the list goes on. And here are the four main reasons why. The first is capital appreciation. Real estate in the US has historically shown strong appreciation over time. By investing in properties in the right location, you can benefit from the natural increase in property values, which can significantly increase your net worth over time. The second is cash flow. Rental properties can provide a steady stream of passive income through monthly rent payments. By leveraging rental income to cover mortgage payments and expenses, you can build wealth while enjoying financial stability. The third is high rental yield. In high cost of living areas like in California, where homes are less affordable, the rental yield tends to be a little bit higher. That means that real estate investors can generate a positive net income from the beginning as rental income often exceeds the cost associated with owning and managing the property. The fourth is tax benefits. The US tax code is super complicated but offers incentives for real estate investors such as deductions for mortgage interest, property taxes, depreciation, and so much more. These benefits help you lower your overall tax liability and increase your cash flow or net profits, allowing you to keep more of your heart and money working for you. Now that you know the benefits, it's time for the big review. Let me give you a sneak peek on the house I just purchased. Let's go. Hey guys, welcome to my new investment property, which I just bought, and I'm going to take you on a house tour today. Okay, so from the main door on the left, we're going into the bedroom area. Okay, don't mind the guy on the right, that's one of the guys checking the attic. And this is a three beds, two baths home, and this is one of the bedrooms. Um, now we're going to go into the secondary bathroom. It's a little small and dated, so we're going to have to change everything here that you see. Now we're in the living room, it's extremely spacious, and check this out. It's an enormous dining area. So what we're probably gonna do is to open up the kitchen, get rid of all this crap here. So it's an open concept kitchen, and then extend it out with an island. And then we're gonna put a dining table and some chairs over here. That ugly shelf has got to go. Um, obviously, we're going to have to strip out everything here. That wall is probably going to be gone too. So the goal is to tear out the majority of the wall so we get more space. So this wall and this wall are going to be gone. And I forgot about this, but we're going to add a small office here at the back near the window. And for the kitchen, here's where the old fridge used to be. We're going to move it over there and I'm going to close up this open hole. The stove is probably going to go in the middle now and then we're going to have new cabinets throughout the kitchen. Going to throw in a new marble island here with cabinets underneath and of course new appliances throughout the house. Um, stove countertop, microwave, fridge, etc. We're going to spruce up this place. Um, and I'm also going to update this laundry room. Not going to do much, just a little update. For the master bathroom dough, it's going to be a complete transformation. I'm going to extend it out so that we can add a full shower with dual vanity tops. It's going to be sick. I can't really tell. Um, the master bedroom is a decent size. It just needs to be updated. Not much we have to do over here. Um, here's the second bedroom. Not much here to do as well. The backyard was well kept. Um, we just got to clean it out. And this is the garage. I'm going to convert it into a studio. It doesn't look as appealing as you thought it was going to be, right? But truth be told, as a real estate flipper, the shittier the house is, the dirtier the house is, and the messier the house is, the better the deal. And why? Because there's more potential to give it a complete transformation. 
And as you can see in the video, um, this is essentially an outdated property with a long list of issues. The fixtures are outdated, the paint is peeling, uh, the flooring is worn out, the roof is in need of repairs, there is no heating or cooling system, the master bathroom is tiny, and the list goes on. But to me, these challenges are not obstacles, they're opportunities. So it's a challenge worth taking on. And since this is a money channel, let's talk numbers. The property was initially listed for $675,000, but after running my comms and conducting assessments, I knew they underpriced it and it was worth a lot more. And during the open house, there were actually many people there. So interest was kind of high and I knew it was probably going to be a multiple offer situation. So. I don't hesitate to submit an offer for $750,000. That's right, $75,000 above the asking price. In Singapore, this is probably unheard of since we usually negotiate down, not up. So it may seem unusual, but um, in the US, it's actually quite common for properties to be sold above the asking price, um, especially during times like the pandemic where properties were getting sold left and right. Now, some of you may wonder, did I overpay for this property? Mm, I don't think so, because when I ran my numbers, even at $750,000, that's still at market value, which means it's a really attractive price. And there were a ton of offers on this property, so if I don't bid at that price, I'm not going to get it. Someone else is going to get it, right? Um, and if you're curious, the whole process took about four days, from me touring the property to me putting an offer and the seller accepting, plus of course the regular 30 days of closing after the seller accepts. Because as the saying goes, you have to strike while the iron is hot, and that's precisely what I did. If you're thinking, wow, that sounds so easy, I think I can do it too. Well, hold on, it may look easy to you, but behind this seemingly swift transaction lies almost a year of me patiently finding the right property. What does that mean? That means spending time on a daily basis to see if there's anything worth buying and if the numbers make sense. Because real estate is not a sprint, it's a marathon. So it's crucial to exercise patience and diligence during this process because as the saying goes, the devil is in the details. Only when the numbers make sense, then you should make your move and make an offer. If you guys are interested to know the process of buying a house in the US, let me know in the comments down below and if there's enough interest, I'll probably make a video about it. So when you buy an investment home, that should be at least two strategies, a plan A and a plan B. For this property, the goal is to make it a rental, but if it sells at the price I want, I'm willing to call it a day and move on. Now, let's talk about the transformation I have in mind for this house. Picture modern sleek finishes that is going to breathe new life into the home with open floor plans that maximize space and flow. I'll also be doing essential upgrades like a new roof, a new HVAC system that's for heating and cooling, adding a half bath for the convenience of gas, and extending that tiny, tiny master bathroom. I don't think anyone can live in there, um, to be honest. And possibly converting the garage to a one bedroom studio, and that's what I have in mind for the remodeling. And for those of you who are interested in flipping homes yourself, I have some tips to share. First and foremost, research your market thoroughly and understand it and don't be afraid to get creative. The second is to run your numbers and stick to your budget. The third is to build a reliable network of contractors. And lastly, conduct thorough due diligence. These are crucial steps in the process. And remember, patience and perseverance are key in the realm of real estate investing. So if you're as eager as I am to see the final outcome and transformation of this flip, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and ring the bell icon so you get notified whenever I post a new video because you wouldn't want to miss the next two videos where I show you the remodeling process in part two and the big review and transformation and running the numbers in part three. And if you have any questions about real estate flipping, leave me a comment down below and feel free to follow me on my Instagram as where I am when I'm not making videos, which is like most of the time. Um, anyway, guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you again next time.